Hello, Fly Finance family. Welcome to Flip It with Samara, a show designed to flip the narrative on how we view and use tax planning or the power of tax planning, I should say, and our personal and business. So if you are hearing me loud and clear, let me know that you are there in the comment section. Make sure that you are um, giving me some wave emojis. Uh, I know that we have three people watching so far. So just let me know that you're there. Let me know who is in the comment section. Um, Cause as always, I want you all to be engaged, right? So again, welcome to Flip It with Samara, the power of tax planning. I am your host, uh, Samara. This CEO and the founder of Five Finance. Um, and every week I come before you to share the knowledge and the skills that I have learned over the years through my, um, through my, uh, oh my gosh, I lost my words. <laughs> Through me being in the industry of finance, right? So all of my experiences. Hey, Angelica, thank you for rocking with me. Um, so anyways, tonight I'm solo dolo. So I have some visual aids that I'm going to be using on tonight to make sure that I get my point across, right? Um, and I definitely want you to be engaging as always. So ask questions, leave comments throughout the live, and I'll be sure to address them throughout the live. So for those of you who saw um, what the topic was, tax shelters, right? And we're going to be talking about tax shelters specifically as it obtain, um, relates to building a legacy. Um, so with that in mind, it's a lot of information that I'm going to try to pack in tonight. But I promise you I'm going to keep it short and sweet because I want to make sure that I make the points, you get it, and then we move on. Um, so I'm going to encourage you to take notes tonight. Get your pens, get your paper ready. Um, so that you can take lots of notes. Again, I'm going to share some visual aids also to make sure that I'm reiterating, getting the point across and that you're jotting down what's important because it's a lot of information that's going to be coming to you. All right. So without further ado, we're going to jump right into it and we're going to be talking about how we can build a tax sheltered legacy. All right. So as you know, I am a big proponent about education um, and I'm a big proponent about sharing that education because I love community. All right. Um, so tonight we're going to be walking through how we can build um, tax shelter legacy through using certain tools. And there's going to be a lot of educational um, aspects that I'll be highlighting. So I'll be sure to slow down and give you definitions as they are needed. All right. Um, so. I'm going to ask everybody this question. I want you to put in um, some, some things in the comment below. But here's a question that I know we've heard a lot. So I want you to put in your answers, what the answers you think it may be in the comments below. But here's a question that I know um, we've heard a lot. And that is, have you ever wondered why the rich get richer and the poor get poorer? Um, there could be a plethora of answers, right? <laughs> it could be, you know, that they had a leg up. Maybe they had a wealthy uncle that left them um, a lot of money. And so they've always had money. And so money came easy to them. So it was easier for them to make it. Um, what I like to focus on when I hear this question is the tool of, that's right, you guessed it, tax planning. I feel like um, that is the number one reason why wealthy people continue to stay wealthy is because they are using tools that are out there that most of us do not use, right? Um, Angelica said, let me get my pen and pad. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. You're going to need it. Um, summarize with us too. He said, of course we have, how did Donald Trump pay less taxes than me? That's right. Um, and so a lot of people were outraged, right. To find out that one of the wealthiest men in the world actually paid less taxes than the average Joe, who is probably working two jobs and has a medium income at best. Um, but it is, um, it's, it's something that you can do, right? Um, and it, it's also legal. <laughs> that's the thing that most people don't understand. Um, so that's the beauty of tax planning is no matter where you are in your financial journey, you can start tax planning. That's what I tell you, right? I say this every week that the wealthy do not wait until they become wealthy to tax plan, but rather use tax planning as a tool to grow their wealth. 
right? So I want you to remember that while I'm walking you through these different strategies, okay? So we're first going to start out about like what um, Five Finance tries to focus on when we talk about tax planning week over week. So my main goal is to focus on three things, right? I want to educate you, I want to equip you, and then I want to elevate you. So that's, what does that mean? That means that I'm showing you, I'm sharing with you these strategies, and then I am telling you, right, things that you can do, equipping you, right, equipping you, and then I am hopefully elevating your finances in some way, shape, or form, whether it's through you reducing your taxes or you increasing your income by using some of these tools and strategies that I share week over week. And so... What you have to understand before we go down this road of tax planning is that there is a difference between tax planning and tax prep, right? Um, Most of us have tax prep done every year. So rather you go to a tax preparer or an accountant to do your taxes, they are preparing the tax return. That's all that tax prep is, right? Um, Angelica says, don't be mad at Trump. He didn't make the rules. He just knows how to play the game. That is true, Angelica. Trump definitely knows how to tax plan, right? And so tax planning is you working with a professional professional throughout the year to ensure that you are setting yourself up to pay the least amount of taxes as possible. So there are a lot of different tools that you can use to obtain that one goal. And so the more tools that you have working in your favor, the better off you'll be with paying the least amount of taxes which is why our former president was able to pay little to no taxes, right? So now that you understand the difference between tax prep and tax planning, now we're going to talk about the percentage of taxpayers that are actually using some form of tax planning. And this may shock you, 27%, right? It was noted that 27% of taxpayers use their tax returns to make annual financial decisions. So, Only 27% of Americans are participating in some form of tax planning, which is pretty sad, especially because most Americans, I think it was around 50%, um, actually use a tax preparer to prepare their tax return, which means that they are going to a professional. Now, when you go to a professional, you're entrusting that that person is going to maximize your refund or maximize um, your credits and deductions, right? And that may or may not be the case. It literally depends on who you're going to, which is why I position myself in the market as a tax strategist, which means I am advocating for each and every one of my clients. And I advocate for my clients by educating myself, right? Equipping myself and then elevating my clients um, to the next level in their savings um, and in their deductions that they can be claiming on their tax return. Yes, Angelica, that is very, very low, right? Um, And so, yeah, Angelica says, listen, they only tell you what you ask, right? So um, we have one question before I go further. Uh, So Samurai is saying, in a perfect world, what is the best way to use our tax return? In a perfect world, the best way to use your tax return is to create a basis. So you have a starting point, um, you know where you are, and then you have to use that basis to create goals, right? So you know where you are, but you also know where you want to go. And so in looking at your tax return, you can see what you did wrong and what you didn't do or what you need to improve on. Um, I honestly use the previous year's tax return when I'm creating a tax planning strategy for a client. Like that is one of the prerequisites because I have to see like what was reported and then I can show the client how much money they left on the table and then I can show the client how much money they'll be saving going forward. So you absolutely can use your tax return as a starting point. That should be your basis, okay? Um, So now we're going to jump right into our topic, right? Creating that tax-sheltered legacy. So when I think about the word legacy, and I want you all in the audience to participate in this, what is the first word that comes to mind when you hear the term legacy? The first words or word that comes to mind when you hear the term legacy. So make sure that you put that in the comments. 
Um, when I hear the word legacy, I think about leaving um, something for my family, um, leaving something for my children's, my children's children's, something that will affect everybody that I touch, everybody who is in my circle, right? Um, that's what I think about when I hear the word legacy. Samurai agrees. He says, my children and their children. Correct. My children's children, right? Um, so if that's what legacy means to you, right, then you understand that there's going to take some planning to make sure that you have things in place to take care of your family. Um, Angelica says, leaving an asset for my family and beyond. Correct, Angelica. So touching that circle, right, that inner circle, um, when you're talking about legacy, there's more than your family that you're affecting. You can affect change um, in your community, and that's building a legacy, right? So for tonight, we're going to focus on three areas where we talk about legacy, and we're going to focus on the estate, your retirement, and then your investments, okay? So when we talk about your estate, hopefully you can see this on the screen. Um, what is an estate, right? So just a very quick um, definition of what your estate is, is all of the assets that you have accumulated um, throughout your lifetime and that will be left to your beneficiaries, all right? So your assets can be both liquid and they can be um, both like real estate or property, non-liquid assets. So cash, any money in your bank, um, savings accounts, um, your retirement plans, <laughs> that's right. That's an asset. Um, and then if you have real estate property, you have a home or you have personal property, maybe you have some old vintage cars, all of those things will be a part of your estate. OK, so when we are talking about um, filing taxes for the estate, there is something called the death tax. All right. Well, it's not really called the death tax. That's what we call it in the accounting world. But it's the estate tax. And usually the IRS um, requires that an estate has to file a tax return if they have revenue in excess of $11.7 million. That was the number for 2021. So most of you are saying it, oh, I don't need that. I don't have to worry about that. But you do, right? Because usually when a person is deceased and there's property that um, the person had in their name, and then there are multiple siblings involved, um, then usually a lawyer will have an accountant file a fiduciary return or an estate return, um, which is the form of 1041. And you have to file that if you have any income that is going to be generated um, that's in excess of $600. Um, so be mindful of that, making sure that you are doing all of your requirements um, when processing um, the estate. Now, you won't be here for that, right? <laughs> but hopefully you have your estate set up in a manner that you have a legal team that will be handling it and making sure that it is um, carried out properly, right? So what are some things that you can do as a beneficiary of an estate, right? These are some shelter strategies. So what you can do if you have a um, estate or your parents left you an estate and there were assets in the estate and you all said, you know what, we want to sell the home. Nobody wants to live in the home, so we want to just sell the home. Um, I would advise you to sell it quickly. Now, here's why. When a person dies and they leave whatever their estate to you, right? Um, the estate value is the fair market value at the time of their death, okay? So if the home is $250,000 when they die, right, in 2020, and then you sell it in 2021 for, let's call it 220000 now you only have a gain of $20,000, right? However, the rest of the proceeds go to you, but it's deducted from the basis. So what does that mean? It's not taxed. <laughs> See, you're only taxed on the interest. You're only taxed on the gain, not on the basis. So you need to sell the assets quickly to take advantage of a lower gain, right? Um, another shelter is life insurance policies. If you have a life insurance policy and you leave that money to your beneficiaries, life insurance distributions are not taxed. 
Yes, you heard me. Life insurance payouts are not taxed, okay? So if you have a life insurance policy and it's a sizable policy and you're leaving that to your loved ones, just know that they can receive that money without it being taxed, all right? So it's, it's imperative <laughs> that you understand how you can shelter the money, not only while you're here, but for your beneficiaries to take advantage of those shelters as well. All right, so we got one question. Um, Samurai is saying, as a part of legacy planning, can grandparents start a 529 plan for their grandchildren? Yes, they can, Samurai. I don't talk about 529 planning um, in the slides, but 529 planning is definitely something that you can start. And what a 529 plan is, is it's usually governed by your state. It allows you to put away money for your children that they are intending to use for educational purposes. So college planning, um, you can even use 529 planning for um, like your K, what up, K4 through 12th grade, right? So if your child is going to school, um, they can use 529 planning for that school tuition. All, all of the requirement is, is that they use it for educational purposes in order for it not to be taxed. So you can use it for other purposes as well, but it will be taxed at that point. Um, so that is another shelter. And I have a 529 plan set up for my kids so that when they start um, college, they can make those withdrawals and it's tax free money. OK, um, the things that I would say be careful about with the 529 plan is you want to always make sure that you're aware of what the gift exclusion rate is for 2021. The gift exclusion rate, I think, was 15,000. So as long as you're not giving that child um, more than $15,000 in a year, then all of that money is tax free, meaning that you as the giver don't have to pay a gift tax on that money. OK, it's always tax free to the recipient, <laughs> but you as the giver don't have to pay a, t a gift tax on that money. So um, thank you, Samurai, for that little sidebar. All right. So then moving on. So we talked about um, what your estate is. We talked about what your requirements are for the estate. And, I, and then we also talked about shelters, how you can shelter that money. So now we're going to move on to retirement. So what is a retirement plan? Retirement plans um, are is money that you're putting aside for your future in order to um, support the life you want to live or the life that you are currently living. Right. So it's financial means that you're putting aside for your future so that when you're no longer earning an income, you still have income being generated or income that you have at your disposal to live the life you want to live. So when we talk about retirement planning, there are options, right? As um, such was with estates. Um, so your options are you can do prepaid um, contributions, which means that you are contributing to an account with money that has already been taxed, meaning that your um, contributions are growing tax free. Or you can do deferred contributions. So that means that you are contributing to the account with contributions that are not yet taxed. So this money is growing tax deferred, right? So tax deferred means when you withdraw, you're gonna have to pay tax on it. Um, but if you're prepaying the taxes when you withdraw, you don't pay taxes on it. Um, so that can be deductible or non-deductible. So if it is not de deductible, it means that it is not being reduced from your taxable income. Right. If it is deductible, it means that it is being reduced. Your taxable income is being reduced. OK, um, so I want you to understand the options because the options determine which um, plan is going to be most beneficial for you. So it is incumbent upon the taxpayer to understand where they are in the current tax bracket, where they may be in their future tax bracket and make a decision based upon that. And there are also some income um, limitations too that may prevent you from being in one of these tax advantageous um, plans. 
but definitely connect with the professional to understand what those are and make sure that you're making the best decision for you. So I want to give you an example of um, how you may go about choosing which plan you should do, whether you should do the pre-tax or whether you should do tax deferred, right? So let's say right now you are a person that is, and I'm looking at my cheat sheet because I wrote down the tax bracket. So let's say right now you are a single person and you are making about $200,000 a year. So that puts you in the 32% tax bracket. That means your income, your earned income is being taxed at 32%. Yes. Um, so when you are making contributions to your account, you probably don't want to pay 32% on those contributions. You probably want to um, make those contributions tax deferred because maybe you're thinking, hey, when I retire, I won't need an income that big. I won't have all the debt that I have. And so maybe my income will be, I don't know, call it 70,000, which puts you in a tax bracket of about 22%, 21%. So that may be the way you look at it, right? Now, vice versa, if you're someone who has a low income bracket now, so let's say you're in the 12% income bracket because you're only making about 40,000 a year, um, then you probably say, no, nah, I wanna pay um, right now. I wanna pay those taxes now so that when I do retire, I don't have to pay any taxes, right? Um, so those are the ways that you have to look at it when determining which plan is gonna be best for you, right? Or at least that's how I look at it. Um, so you can take it or not, but that's one of the strategies that I use. Um, we have a question. So before I go forward, uh, Samara says, I've heard that we need a CPA to help with tax planning. Is that true? So you definitely want to connect with someone who is going to advocate on your behalf. So somebody who understands the tax code and somebody who is going to use that tax code to create a plan that is going to have you paying the least amount of taxes, right? So yes, I would say connect with the professional. Um, some, some accountants aren't CPAs, but they are tax strategists and they know the tax code and they can help you. They're even EAs. Okay, which is an enrolled agent. They know the tax code. They can help you, all right? So it doesn't necessarily have to be a CPA, but you definitely want to connect with a professional who understands the tax code and is going to advocate on your behalf to make sure that you're paying the least amount of taxes as possible, all right? Um, all right, so then moving on to shelters for retirement. So I always love the shelter part because this is where I get excited because this is where you can literally save the most amount of money if it's done right, right? So um, some tax plans are afforded to entrepreneurs. And so entrepreneurs have a um, greater opportunity to shelter more of their money when contributing to some of these retirement accounts. So a solo 401k account, um, a simple IRA account, a simp, uh, SEP or a SEP IRA account, these are all afforded to entrepreneurs. Now, the things that I love about these accounts are it allows you to have greater contribution rates. So, you know, like a traditional IRA, you can only contribute 6000 a year or up to 7000 a year if you're over the age of 50. Um 401k, I want to say it's like 19.5 for the year. And these numbers change, which is why I'm like, hopefully I'm throwing the right numbers at you. Um, but when you talk about like a solo one, 401k, um, you can contribute up to 25% of your business income if you are a sole prop or LLC. Um, when you talk about a SEP IRA, um, it's the same thing, right? Or up to 56,000, I believe the um, amount was, whichever is the smallest. So you want to make sure that you are taking advantage of these shelters because it's allowing you to shelter more of your money into a retirement account because you are an entrepreneur. So take advantage of it, right? Take advantage of being able to put more aside than the average Joe, okay? Um, and then you also want to make sure that you are taking qualified distributions, <laughs> Now, the reasons why I say make sure you're taking qualified distributions is because there is absolutely no tax on these withdrawals. Now, you're probably saying, Samara, 
what are qualified distributions and how can I take them? So a qualified distribution is um, usually a distribution that is made to a prepaid tax account, right? So let's say that you have a tradition or I'm sorry, a Roth IRA, which is a prepaid tax account. Um, and you've had that uh, account, you've been vested in that account for five years. So any contributions that you're making to that account is going tax free. Yes. So when you make withdrawals from that account after you've been invested for five years or vested in it for five years, those withdrawals are not taxed because you have made the contributions with taxed dollars. All right. Now, there are some things that you need to be mindful of. Make sure that you are not withdrawing any of the gains or the interest that was earned on that money. Right. You can only make withdrawals on um, the money being tax free if it was a part of your basis, part of your contribution. Right. So make sure that you're taking these qualified distributions as needed. Right. Um, so we have another question. Angelica says, um, what questions should we ask? a CPA to know if they are knowledgeable with tax planning or not. Um, you know what? Just have a conversation with them about your tax return. The easiest way to understand if someone is knowledgeable um, about the tax code is to get them to walk you through your tax return, right? So what I would do if I were you, Angelica, if you didn't go with that person last year, say, hey, um, I think that I may have overpaid in my taxes last year and I am looking for another CPA um, to partner with and do my taxes going forward. Would you mind walking me through my tax return so that I can have a clear understanding of what I paid, why I paid, and if there's anything that I can do to make this better? Okay. Um, and so if that person is willing um, to walk you through the tax return and when they're walking you through, you take notes, you be aware if they seem confident, um, make sure that they don't always like that's the thing. Sometimes um, we're not going to always have all of the answers because because the tax code is so huge and there's going to be some things you forget. Um, but a good CPA, a good EA, a good accountant will definitely let you know, you know, hey, let me check on that for you. I'll get back with you. And that's OK. I would rather somebody tell me that than to tell me something that is wrong. And then it costs me a lot of money down the road. All right. So that's a way that you can, you know, vet that CPA, Angelica, is just by asking them, hey, can you do a review of last year's tax return? Just walk me through it and make sure that I understand what was going on and see, you know, if there was some um, some updates or something that maybe I missed. Right. So that will definitely give you a baseline on whether that person is knowledgeable or not. OK. All right. So then moving on to the final section of tonight um, is the investments, right? So we talked about um, building a legacy through estate planning, and we talked about how we can shelter our estates. We talked about how we can shelter our retirements. Um, but now we want to talk about how we can shelter our investments. So there are some options when we're considering investments to build that legacy. We have long-term and then we have short-term and then we have non-taxable and then we have taxable. And you're probably saying, what non-taxable investments? Absolutely. There are non-taxable investments. All right. It is out there. It can be done. Um, so when considering these options, right, these options directly affect how your distributions, gains, dividends will be taxed. OK, so it's important that you understand the tax implications when you are um, selling and buying investments. Um, so, you know, I want you to take note. Right. So first, you need to understand what long term investment is. So a long term um, investment or a long term asset is a capital asset that you hold for um, a year or more. I should say for a year and a day. That's how the tax code is written. It has to be held for a year and a day <laughs> in order for it to be considered long term. And short term is anything that you held, hold for a year or less. OK, um, so those uh, two different assets directly tie to how it's going to be taxed. 
When we talk about short-term investments, those are taxed at your tax bracket. It's considered ordinary income or earned income and it's taxed at your tax bracket. Long-term capital gains or long-term um, assets or investments are taxed at a lower tax bracket, okay? So I think it's either zero, 15, or 20%. It, it depends on what your income is, okay? But it's taxed at a lower tax bracket. So ideally, it would be more favorable to have more long-term than short-term, yes? All right. And then you have the app options of non-taxable versus taxable, okay? So when we talk about taxable investments, most of your investments are going to be something that you have to pay tax on when you earn money from it, right? When you have a gain. Um, but there are some non-taxable investments that can be made. So when you make investments to um, certain bonds, if it's a government bond, the interest that you earn on government bonds, most government bonds are not taxable. Okay, so maybe something to consider when you're putting your portfolio together to give you some diversity on having income that's flowing through, um, most of it probably being taxed, but some of it that's not taxed, right? So make sure that you are aware of that because that's one way that you can shelter um, your investments is investing in some of those non-taxable um and long-term investments, right? So some ways I say to shelter it, um, offset your gains with losses. Most people don't know this. If you have a gain that you have to claim, um, and then you also have a loss that you have to claim, you can offset your gains with your losses, right? So you can offset your losses up to $3,000 for that tax year. So make sure that you are taking advantage of that. Yes, you made money, but if you lost money, make sure that you're offsetting that, right? Um, we have one question before I move forward. Angelica said, can you share some of the government bonds? Angelica, if you are a part of my um, private Facebook group, I will definitely be sharing some of the government bonds in my private Facebook group. I, yeah, I had plans to do that, but I only want to do that for the people that are part of the private Facebook group, <laughs> right? Um, so I will definitely be sharing with you um, some places you can go to look at some of these government bonds so you can see um, and take advantage of these non-taxable um, bonds, right? Um, so offset uh, your gains with your losses. Um, make sure that you are making some non-taxable investments, right? Get that portfolio diversified, which is what I was saying about the government bonds. Um, another way that you can shelter your investments is hold your investments long-term. So instead of selling something um, on what we call like short sales or doing day trading um, and paying that same tax rate that you're going to pay on your ordinary income, maybe hold them long-term so that you can be... Um, subject to those reduced or lower tax brackets, right? Um, so that's it. Um, that That is what I have tonight, right? Walking you through how to build, Angelica says she's a part of it. Good, then I will be sharing that with you. And I plan to go live on Friday, Angelica, just as a sidebar, plan to go live on Friday um, and share that information with you. And then I'll follow it up with the link being in the comments. So make sure that you are looking out for that. Um, Samurai says, so I want in on this private Facebook group. If, um, if you're, I'm sorry, let me see. I want in on this private Facebook group of you giving away that kind of fire information. Yes, I'll be sure to uh, share the link in the comments as well on how you become a member of the private Facebook group. Um, but but yeah, so that that's it, y'all. That That is uh, the live in a nutshell. I am um, so glad that you rocked with me for the, the whole live. I know it was a lot of information, um, but I definitely hope that using the slides uh, definitely kept your attention. Um, and it looks like you were engaged as always. So I appreciate you being engaged as always. Um, and again, if you think that this information was great and you want to share it, please share it. I feel like the more people that are educated and how they can approach this tax planning game, the more um, they will just do it, right? I feel like a lot of times um, we allow fear because we don't know about something to prevent us from making those strides, making those things that we um, need to do in order to create our wealth. 
right? And build the legacy that we want to build to leave for our children and our children's children, right? So Angelica says, drop the link in the description of the video. Yes, I definitely will. All right. Um, so again, thank you so much, Five Finance Family, for rocking with me tonight. If you enjoyed this, um, I am absolutely going to give you some information on how you can stay connected with me. But first, I'm going to ask you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, if you liked what you heard tonight, make sure that you are hitting that subscription button. Make sure that you are hitting the like um, channel or the like so that you are liking the video. Um, and then always make sure that you are listening to our podcast as well. We also stream this on our podcast platform. So we're on Apple Music, we're on Spotify, and we're on Amazon Music as well. So make sure that you're tuning into our podcast while you're driving to work, are you working at the office? Um, definitely a lot of uh, information that I try to share week over week. And if you want to connect with me personally, right, you said, hey, you know what? She sounds like she know about this tax planning game. I think I might want to do something for myself. If you want to connect with me personally, visit our website. So www.fivefinance.com and you can book a free consultation. So I have free tax planning consultations and we can definitely see if you would be a good candidate to be a part of our tax planning family. All right. Um, so next week we have a special guest. Um, that's going to be joining us. Tammy is going to be joining us and she is going to be walking us through um, legacy building through business planning. So she is a business coach um, and I love her energy. I love her spirit. Um, she definitely is spunky. So it's going to be a lot of fire, a lot of sauciness <laughs> that she's going to be bringing to the stage next week. So you are all in for a super treat, all right? So make sure that you're tuning in next week, um, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where we have Tammy walking us through how to create a legacy through entrepreneurship, all right? Um, so if you're an entrepreneur, I encourage you to come back and I encourage you to tell some of your other entrepreneur friends so that they can also tune in and be a part of this event. So again, Five Finance family, thank you so much for rocking with me tonight. Um, I hope you all found that this was very, very helpful and informative at the very least. But again, we want to make sure that we educate, equip, and elevate you. I always want to leave you better than I found you, right? Um, so until next time, Five Finance family, you all have a blessed and wonderful Tuesday evening, and I will see you next week.